All right, now let's take a look at some basic security on how to secure computer for personal internet use. Now, some class topics on this here. We're going to look at the online risk. See what's available on there. And we'll look at the hackers, how they kind of came about to be. And look at identity theft, as well as some end user security best practices, uh, more specifically on password and password attack countermeasures as well as setting up security protocols, such as internet security suites, anti-spyware, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So what are the risks? Well, you may already know that viruses are bad. Spyware is bad. You may have heard of something called adware, which could also be bad, but more annoying than anything else. But you know, it always comes down to what you don't know will probably hurt you, at least in this field. So. Let's take a look at some of the things that we know uh, about and hopefully get into some of the unknown. So some of the known risks that we have, right? But did you know that you could actually be helping hackers with getting your information and using it for their benefit if you happen to use email? And the likelihood of 99.99% .99 of you all using email is most likely. Right? Do you use some type of autofill in when you go to your browsers and use Internet Explorer or Firefox or Chrome or whatever it is you're using for Internet Exploring? And usually comes with a nice little feature called the autofill in. This is where basically you go to a form that you fill out and you get to put in your information. And then if you go to another form somewhere else, it will then have that information that you've already put in so you don't have to refill it in every time. It's a nice little convenience, however, very dangerous to have on your machine. Very easy to get to as a hacker. Do you shop online? Likelihood is probably. Um, whether it be both private or on via the business, uh, that could definitely put you at risk. Um, do you use a messenger or instant messenger program? All right, it's an IM program, uh, such as AOL, instant messenger, Yahoo, uh, MSN, or Link, or something to that effect. Uh, that could possibly put you at risk. Do you clear your cache and cookies regularly? If you do, that might be actually a good thing. If you don't, that could possibly be a cause uh, for concern because hackers will actually get access to those cookies uh, and to your cache, which is basically where your temporary internet files are stored and so forth. Now, do you also allow ActiveX controls? And sometimes this can be controlled through what we call a group policy. So whenever you log into the system, it sets this group policy that says, do not use ActiveX controls for certain sites and so forth, and only use it for internal sites, which we call the intranet uh, and such. Now, did you know, according to a recent survey, only less than three minutes, less than three minutes for your computer to be attacked once it's connected to the internet. Now. My personal opinion is that it takes a lot less than three minutes. I mean, we're talking literally 30 seconds that you could be attacked from the internet once you're connected. It all just depends on what type of security you already have in place before you connect onto the internet. If you have no security and you connect to the internet, it can be literally you know, less than a minute of time before your computer is attacked. I used to teach uh, back when Windows 2000 first came out, a Microsoft course where we installed 2000 Professional. Uh, this was before Windows XP. And while we were updating, you know, looking for updates on online, uh, while we were doing the updating, we were getting attacked. So it didn't take very long at all, even back then, to be attacked. And mainly it had to do with what kind of security measures you already have in place. If you have a firewall, then you're somewhat secure. You have an antivirus and firewall, you're a little bit more secure. Right? You, you have lots of different options there um, that you can implement and that your organization will most likely is implementing uh, to help protect against that. So again, what are the risks here? There are ways of accessing the system with attackers pretending they're legitimate companies like Microsoft and so forth and learning your private information often without you knowing it's even happening. They will then have possibly remote access to your machines. They can remote to your machine whenever you're connected to the internet. It could be coming through through bogus Microsoft updates, for instance. So instead of going through the Microsoft update site, you're going to some third-party site and downloading updates that way. Uh, it could be recording cookies, which a cookie is basically a text file on your system that is stored in your cache file, as in your temporary cache, temporary files, 
uh, that actually stores uh, information about you. So next time you go to a website, it'll have like your name and say it's welcome back. Uh, and it'll have your name there. And that's all stored within a cookie and that's how it knows who you are. And of course, we also have root kits and keystroke loggers. And uh, these, of course, are very hard to, to find at times and they can cause a lot of damage. Uh, specifically too, they cause your machines to tend, generally slow down and cause them to crash uh, every so often um, and use up a lot of your resources, just as your memory and your processing power. So things you need to know. Did you know that if someone were to access the internet from your home and a crime was committed, the odds are that you will be held responsible? Here, according to Infoworld.com, a recent article, if someone commits a crime with your internet connection, you should you could be held responsible. And some others say that you should be held responsible. Um, this is uh, very true, actually. Um, a lot of the uh, advanced hacking and such that I do with Mile 2, uh, some of it comes through the wireless side of things. And you probably, I'm assuming you would have some type of wireless access point, such as a wireless router that you connect uh, to your internet through. And if somebody got a hold of that router, or was able to get onto your machine, uh, onto your uh, network via, you know, that router because you either one didn't secure it, you left it unsecure, or you have very weak security, such as web uh, security, for instance, with a weak key. Um, then somebody, if somebody does get access to that and then commits crimes, um, because it is your equipment, you may be held responsible for that. And uh, there are definitely cases out there where that was the case. So just be very cautious that because it's your equipment, you have to be careful. You have to keep it protected. So make sure you put some good passwords on it. Uh, make sure you secure it uh, with higher encryption levels. So when it comes to wireless, for instance, you want to use WPA or WPA2 uh, as part of your security encryption. Um, and you want to make sure that, that uh, everything is nicely password protected with nice, long, complicated passwords. Now, complicated complicated password doesn't necessarily mean that it has to be you know upper lowercase symbols and everything and and sound all like 3g explanation point five two uh uppercase d lowercase b number eight uh the at symbol and so forth but it can be simply something like mary had a little lamb um but you just use the first initial of every word and then you maybe add a number or a symbol there and that could be did as well something easy to remember uh, we referred to that as a passphrase and it could be something like that make sure it's you know plenty of characters long as in eight or more or even ten or more characters all right now if we look at the hacker there's basically different levels of hackers all right now when we look at the term hacker uh, there's different levels of hackers and even within the hacking community they have their own little system own reasons to acts to the commit and so forth such as like your vandals uh, that basically do out of curiosity or personal fame. Uh, these would be called your script kitties. And the script kitties are generally what we call the noobs or the new newcomers. Uh, they basically will download a tool and then just execute the tool without really knowing what the tool is doing or how to uh, execute the attack without the tool um, and such. So uh, these are generally going to be, you know, maybe your preteens, your teenagers and such uh, that are out there. Uh, causing a little bit of havoc and maybe they're, they're just doing it for personal fame uh, more than anything else right you also have um, your trespassers um, and these are going to mainly maybe do it more so for personal gain um, you know there might be money involved there and they can range from you know being more like a hobbyist to expert uh, hacker considered uh, within that realm we also have of course within the personal gain also lost uh, largest area lost with the dollar amount and if we move on up we have our thieves and these are going to have the largest area of, of dollar loss also fastest growing segment and this is going to be the, what the uh, identity theft people are basically and these are going to be uh, the ones stealing your credit card numbers and you know swiping your card it could be as simple as somebody you know at the restaurant that you give your credit card to and they have another card swiper that they use and that will just record your information. All they have to do is swipe it, as simple as that. And they may even do it in plain sight in front of you without you really knowing. So uh, again, it's very, very dangerous and, and such out there, but it's also 
very profitable for them um, if they gather enough um, credit card information with everything else um, about you. All right, and also the largest segment spent uh, on dollar amounts, spent on defense, of course, would be your spies, right? These are going to be your experts, your specialists, uh, and uh, of course, they might have more of a national interest uh, in it. These might also be the hacktivists, which may do it more for a cause than anything else. But again, largest amount of dollar um, um, spent on defense against it is is definitely there. So keep that in mind as um, you know you kind of see things going on and so forth. And uh, just know that it's very real and very, very current. So what is identity theft? Well, identity theft occurs when someone uses a personally identifiable information like your name, social security number, credit card number without your permission to commit frauds or other crimes. And the FTC estimates that as many as 10 million Americans have their identity stolen each year. And uh, you can actually go to the consumerftc.gov website to check that out. And it's amazing uh, on some of the things there. Uh, it's becoming more and more each year, and it's very easily done. So you have to be very cautious, check items, make sure you're, you do a lot of different things there to um, get things going. All right, fighting identity theft. Now, awareness, of course, is an effective weapon against identity theft. You need to be aware of what's going on. What are these bad guys doing out there? How are they actually committing this? What are they doing to get your information and things like that? And, uh, you know, they do everything from stealing your mail from the mailbox to um, you know just swiping your credit card at the at the local restaurant I mean this is very very straightforward very easy to do it just depends on how desperate they are and, and so forth that they're in uh, the situation they're in so awareness also how information is stolen and what you can do to protect yourself awareness also of the need to monitor your personal information to uncover any problems quickly again very very interesting I did a little project um, where I actually used somebody else's credit card with their permission, of course, and I spent over $4,000 using that credit card. I did everything from purchase things online to physically go to the store and purchase items to go to a restaurant, and um, I was never asked for ID. Uh, they never checked you know, the signature to match and nothing like that, and it was just amazing how much money I was able to spend um, and I ended up giving the, the credit card back. Of course, um, everything that was spent and so forth was um, reimbursed and so forth. But needless to say, it was uh, a nice little project that I was able to see firsthand that, you know, it doesn't really matter. As long as you have a credit card, it, you can spend money. It's, it's crazy. So if you ever lose your credit card uh, or think you lost it, uh, make sure that uh, you let your bank know or your credit card company know that, hey, you might want to put a hold on it or make sure at least that you monitor it uh, until you locate it or something. Um, it's always better to put it on hold and then find it later uh, and then, you know, have them open it back up than not say anything at all and wait a few days because within a few days, your card might be maxed out, literally. So you got to be very cautious and aware of that. All right. Also, awareness of what to do when you suspect your identity has been stolen. That's something I just mentioned there. All right, you can also check out the Consumer FTC website to check out some of those features. Now, we have uh, some little practice links here for you that you guys can check. Um, and uh, basically here, there's a little online games that you basically go through that ask, actually ask you questions and take you through the process of what to do uh, and so forth to see if you're aware of the different scenarios. So I've put a, a few different of the links out there, everything from uh, auction, if you're doing any kind of online auctioning, uh, if you know stuff about spyware or even using Friend Finder, ID theft, face off, we have invasion, wireless hackers, I mentioned here a minute ago, right? If you're doing any kind of investment online, uh, if you have any type of laptop that you just kind of have around, uh, I was at the library not too long ago and um, there was a lady there that was sitting about two tables down and she had her laptop up and running and everything and then she just leaves to go to the restroom and leaves her laptop right there not even locked not even locked and just leaves it there and is literally gone for at least five minutes and comes back everything of course is fine but uh you could imagine you know just being gone for 20 seconds could be if, if nobody's looking right 
on how easily that laptop could have been stolen or um, you know compromised because she didn't lock the computer so it made it vulnerable to lots of attacks um, but be aware that that definitely is um, you know definitely is doable of course if you're doing any kind of peer-to-peer -peer sharing uh, phishing scams via email spam scams and so forth right uh, and things like that so uh, why don't we take you guys through some of these and then uh, if you get an opportunity you can check out some of these other ones uh, as well and go through it and to kind of test yourself on that so why don't we give that a shot and, and give it a go all right hopefully you had lots of fun uh, going through some of those uh, exercises there and uh, you know again it seemed a little silly but it does come through and, and show you that there are definitely um, you know things out there that you're like oh I didn't know about that and uh, hopefully that was the case on, on some of those and uh, hopefully it was also a little fun to go through and, and kind of you know get yourself a little bit more awareness so let me show you guys uh, some other types of uh, identity theft resources that you can use uh, some different websites in particular and so forth that you can uh, check out and take from there so let's go ahead and uh, take a look at a few of those all right so hopefully that helped you out a little bit with looking at some of those sites and keep in mind you know overall don't panic um, it's just a short introduction to some of the matters and simple fixes, of course, that we'll be discussing. And defending against hackers is as easy as playing solitaire on your PC. Once you know what you're looking for, the rest is going to be pretty easy, right? So it's just a matter of getting what you're looking for and finding it and knowing what to do, of course, about it uh, and so forth. All right, awesome. Well, great. Let's go ahead and take you on to the next section.